to live and to love the gospel of the Lord. Heart to Heart, a Catholic media ministry, presents an inspiring gospel reflection by Father Michael Sparrow. Father Michael is a Jesuit priest working as a writer and retreat master at the Bellarmine Jesuit Retreat House outside Chicago. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give you praise, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for what you have hidden from the learned and the wise, you have revealed to little ones. Father, it is true, such is your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom he chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and find life burdensome, and I will refresh you. Take my yoke upon your shoulders and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. Your souls will find rest, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. I was talking with a counselor some time ago who shared the story of a policeman who had come to her in the midst of all of the social unrest that is going right now and the depictions of police brutality and the arguments about systemic racism within the country. And the policeman came to the counselor and said, I beat up my wife last night. I've never laid a hand on any woman. I've never touched my wife in anger before. But last night I beat her up. And I don't know why I did it. I need help. For that policeman, that was the beginning of a recovery process. Because there are dark forces at work inside all of us as individuals, as a country, as a church. Recovery begins when we acknowledge that we need help, that we can't do it alone. In the midst of that, Jesus stretches out his arms and he says, come to me. All you who are weary, those who are burdened, come to me and let me refresh you. Here at the Bellarmine Retreat House, you know, uh, we're hoping to be able to open up in the fall. But I would say it's a near universal consensus among the staff that among the most sincere retreatants that come are those who come as part of a recovery retreat. Now, I'm not saying that all retreatants don't come with a, with a good attitude. I, th I think they do. But those who I think benefit often in the most significant way from the retreat experience are those whose lives have been devastated by addiction. And if you have any familiarity with the 12-step program, either through your own recovery or recovery and members of your family, you know that the first three steps can be summarized by, I can't. You can, and I let you. My life is out of control, first step. My life is out of control, I need help a power far greater than myself. Second step, recognizing that that power is far beyond us. For most of us, we recognize that as the Lord Jesus. 
And it's surrendering our lives into Jesus' hands. It's taking the burden, it's taking the yoke that we choose, that we fashioned for ourselves, taking that yoke, cracking it, setting aside, and taking the yoke of the cross and setting it on our shoulders so that the burden is shared with Jesus. We're walking with him. Let's recognize things are not getting better in our country. They're getting worse. According to a recent poll by the Census Bureau, one-third of Americans said that they're suffering from some form of clinical depression. One out of every three reported to the Census Bureau that they're suffering from some form of clinical depression. Two-thirds of us in a recent poll described ourselves as fearful. Two-thirds of us, fearful. Only 17% in another recent poll, this is a Pew report, 17% of Americans said they're proud of this country. Only 17%. And according to another poll, a whopping 71% of Americans described themselves as angry. That's almost three quarters of us describing ourselves as angry. We're angry that the government shut us down. We're angry that the government opened things up. We're angry that we're forced to wear masks. We're angry that some people aren't wearing masks. We're angry of the racial inequities within this country. We're, ran- we're angry at the, vi- at the protests that have turned violent and the statues that are being toppled. Depending on whether you swing left or whether you swing right, the issues are different, but what unites us, sadly, as Americans, is that three quarters of us are angry as hell. And we see the problem out there. It's them people, or them people, depending on which way you're looking. In the midst of this, Jesus comes and he says, come to me. All you who are weary and find life burdensome, and let me refresh you. The beginning of a spiritual conversion is recognizing that God is God and we are not. There's no shortage of pundits and explanations of what we need to do to fix our country. There's all kinds of opinions out there. And the, the, the... Ideas are are all over the place. But what we celebrate today as we hear this gospel is that God is God and we are not. And it begins, it begins, the recovery begins with like the humble admission of that policeman of saying, I don't understand myself. I need help. I need God's help at work in my life. That's the beginning of any religious experience. It's the beginning of this closer walk to the Lord, of acknowledging, I can't do it by myself. And there's no shame in that. As a country, we Americans are proud of our independence. And the national heroes in America are rugged individuals, those who rose through the adversity, and they did it by themselves. Frank Sinatra didn't become famous by singing, I did it our way. No, it's the power of one that we celebrate within this country. Now, that makes good economic sense, but it's terrible religion. Jesus doesn't teach us to pray, my father. He teaches us to pray, our father. And one of the things David Brooks, a columnist in the New York Times, said, we've lost that sense of collective identity as a people. It's being fragmented. Fragmented as a nation, and I think it's being fragmented for us as a people who stand under the banner of the cross. Of saying, we're in this together, folks. 
Let's see what unites us rather than simply what divides us. And our eyes need to be opened by the gifts and the graces of the Holy Spirit. And we simply can't do that by ourselves. We need amazing grace. We need God's grace at work in our hearts to crack open the hardness of our hearts. This gospel is from Matthew chapter 11. And earlier in the chapter, Jesus has just gotten word that John the Baptist has been imprisoned by King Herod because John the Baptist was speaking truth to power. Herod didn't like that. He didn't like being criticized. He didn't like being told that his marriage was unlawful. So he threw John the Baptist in prison. Now, it's interesting. Jesus' response to that is not to say, oh, that wicked King Herod, that terrible president, that terrible governor, that terrible mayor. That wasn't Jesus' response to the injustice of John the Baptist being imprisoned. You know what Jesus' response is? Oh, you faithless generation, how long do I have to put up with you? You're like spoiled brats. He accuses the whole generation. And then he goes after the people that he's preached to. He singles out the times of Chorazin, Bethsaida, Capernaum. He said, if the miracles that were done in Sodom and Gomorrah and Tyre and Sidon were done, For you, for for them, they would have repented. But you've seen all of these miracles, you've seen all of these signs, and you haven't repented. Woe to you. Jesus goes after the generation, and then he goes after the collectivity of the city. He doesn't simply blame the king. He says, this is a generational issue. This is a systemic problem. And then what's the solution he offers? After that lambasting criticism, Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary, those who are tired, those who are angry, those who are frustrated, those who are depressed, come to me. Because the truth has been hidden from the learned and the clever, those with the PhDs, those who are the political commentators, The truth is often hidden from them. Who is it revealed to? The little ones, the childlike, those whose hearts, those whose hearts are unencumbered are the ones who can see the truth that we need to return to God. That's the beginning of our recovery process. Yes, of course we need this debate on the systemic injustices within our country. Yes, of course, we need to address the issue of racism. Yes, of course, we need to address the issue of economic inequalities. Yes, of course, we need to address the issue of jumpstarting our economy. Yes, of course, we need to call for peace in the midst of the protests. Of course, of course, of course. But Jesus says, let it begin by coming to me. Let me renew your hearts. Let me open your eyes. Let me provide a vision of recognizing we're in this together and we're all broken. Even as we look to our founding fathers and mothers of this nation, we recognize that they were imperfect people. They did some really good things and they did some really bad things. Not unlike us. We're all sinners and we need a savior. We need to claim Jesus as Lord. Let me close by just sharing a little prayer. Oh Lord, we are weary. We are tired of the fight. So much confusion, so much division. Worries like weeds spring up in our souls. How can we ever find our way home? Jesus, keep reminding us that you are God and we are not. That no problem is too big for you. No heart so hardened that it can't be cracked open. So crack the yokes we've chosen to carry. 
and fashion one anew that allows us to walk beside you. Amen. Amen. Heart to heart, hand in hand, praying for grace to understand. Spirit of Jesus, open our hearts to live and to love the gospel.